Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Lightroom Classic and there's a recent update to their masking panel, which is fantastic. I think you're gonna love it if you haven't used it yet. Uh, and if you've been here before, you know I talk about masking all the time because it's a critical skill in editing that allows you to really take your images from kind of so-so to potentially amazing. And it's because it's about control. It allows you to control light, detail, color, all the things that we work on in a photo. And the beautiful thing about this masking update is it gives you more control, more accuracy, and it makes it easier and quicker. It's really fantastic. I know you're gonna love it. It's powered by, by AI, but you're still in control uh, in terms of how you're applying these edits and where it's really beautiful. I'm gonna go into that. By the way, if you haven't yet picked up my free editing guide for Lightroom Classic, that link is down below. You can check that out and let's go ahead and get into it. So I've got a photo here. I've already done a couple of things in basic before and after and the update, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the masking now, which of course is right here. The update is this new section here called landscape. Now it's a bit of a misnomer because it says landscape and I am gonna use it on a landscape, but it also picks up elements that are existing in other types of scenes like cityscapes because it picks up architecture too. I'll show you that in the next photo. So even though it's called landscape, if you don't shoot landscapes, you can still use this tool. It's really powerful. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it and it's gonna go ahead and it identifies three different sections of this photo. Now in total, it will identify seven different elements. It's got, and I gotta read them here, sky, water, mountains, vegetation, architecture, natural ground, and artificial ground. So seven different things it can find for you automatically. So it's going, uh, gone ahead and identified these elements. And as you hover, you can see that it's gonna show you what the mask will contain. So all you do is you just click to pick uh, one, two, or three, or up to seven. And you will notice it also gives you the opportunity or the option here to create three separate masks or however many elements are identified and you choose. So that's basically just taking all these elements it identifies, automatically building the mask for you, which I'm gonna do by clicking Create Mask. And there you go. My masking panel is populated and ready to edit. Quicker, easier, super accurate. I love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with water. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is if you look at the water, I, what I wanna do is just uh, brighten a little bit, maybe give it a little bit more blue, right? So I'm gonna do that real simply and quickly here. So slightly higher uh, uh, exposure, maybe a tiny bit of contrast, a little bit reduction in temperature. And maybe I'll come over here and try a little dehaze, see what that does. Yeah, I mean, uh, that looks fine. I also tend to like smoother water. So I'm gonna take the clarity and the texture and just pull those to the left. And all I'm doing is just adjusting minor adjustments to the water before and after quick, easy, accurate. Next up, I'm gonna get mountains. And you will notice that the mountains, it's identified them really well, including, let me click on that, uh, even this little tree that's sticking out. This is a scene in Norway, uh, overlooking what's called Pulpit Rock in Southern Norway. It's a beautiful area. Uh, anyway, you can see for mountains, I mean, it nailed it. The water it nailed, the sky it nailed. I mean, honestly, it's kind of perfect. And the thing about these elements it identifies is that in the past, I used to have to go create my own mask for each of these things separately with like a, you know, like a radial mask or linear gradient or whatever it might be, brush mask, object mask, but it's so quick and it's so easy. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of increase in uh, the exposure here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of warmth just to give it a tiny bit, you know, so maybe a seven or eight and maybe a little bit of tint uh, just cause I like that. And I am gonna give it uh, because it's rock Effectively, I'm gonna give it a little texture and clarity to give it a little extra kick. And again, quick, easy, powerful before and after. I just think it looks great. In fact, I may actually pull down the highlights a little bit because they're in the distance. It's a little bit brighter than I want it to be. I think that looks fine. And then sky. Now we've had sky mask before, but it's included in landscape, of course. The thing I notice here is that when I click on sky, it's overlapping the mountains just a little bit, especially in the distance. But if you look at the mountain mask, the mountain mask is perfect, right? So you can use the tricks that Lightroom offers you, which is to subtract a mask, and I can go in and subtract the mountains. Well, the mountains are in landscape, so I can actually choose that category again and subtract whatever elements I want to subtract. In this case, it's mountains, create mask, and it's basically now just cleaned up that edge for me. It's beautiful, it's perfect, and honestly, it couldn't really be much easier. I'm gonna do a tiny bit brighter, maybe a little bit of contrast, pull down those highlights, Maybe a little bit of dehaze here, just to give a little bit of drama to the sky. 
I like to pull down clarity and texture in this guy to smooth it out. Pretty simple and straightforward edit, but if you look at what I did with these masks before and after, before and after, super powerful, super quick, super easy, super accurate. And I, if I wasn't talking to you, I would be spending maybe a minute or two in this photo. For those of you that don't like editing for some reason, which is fine, I love editing, but if you don't like editing or you feel like it takes too long, you're gonna love this. It couldn't really be easier. And I see a spot in the water, which I didn't get. But I wanna grab another photo, a cityscape, and show you how you can use these tools, these masking tools for that as well. Okay, same idea here. I've already done some things prior to starting this video. So before and after, a little brightening, etc. in basic crop straightened, took out some spots. Hopefully I got them all this time. Uh, but again, I want to jump into the masking, click on the masking menu. And if you click landscape, it'll automatically identify the elements that it will identify. Again, there's up to seven. And I think it picks five in this case. Uh, but let's see here. It takes it a minute, depending on how many elements there are to find. But there you go. Yeah, picked up five. So sky architecture, which it's not perfect. I mean, look at all this tree that's in front of the building, but it's done a pretty good job. Vegetation, again, pretty good job. Artificial ground effectively nails it. Natural ground effectively nails it. Once again, I'm gonna grab all five and create five separate masks, which I love this and my masks are ready to go. So for natural ground, which is that grass, I'm gonna uh, bring the exposure down. It's a little bit too bright, a little bit too neon green for me. And so I'm gonna take the temperature down slightly as well and maybe even use point color because that's part of the masking menu uh, in Lightroom and take that green and just take that hue, make it a little bit uh, richer green, but less saturated, maybe a little bit darker, just kind of playing around. Bottom line is you can quickly and easily do that. So before and after, nail the mask. I didn't have to do anything other than pl uh, click a button. Uh, what I want to do now is move to this next one, artificial ground. And here I'm going to go slightly brighter just to accentuate that path through the photo. And then I'm gonna close point color. I'm gonna add a little bit of texture and clarity because I want that to be a little bit crunchier. Uh, and notice that clarity also tends to brighten things. So I actually might pull that exposure down slightly. I don't want it to be too bright. Something about like that, but again, nailed it quick, easy, and that just straight down the center shot. And that, uh, that pathway is one of the things I wanted to uh, illuminate in the past. I had to do that a bit more manually. Now I'm gonna move on to vegetation. And as you can see here, it grabs a lot of it, but it also overlaps with the sky. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I were to increase the exposure of the vegetation quite a bit, I'm not gonna go that high, but this is a good example of what you can do. You can see that fringing or that kind of halo around the tree branches. Well, I'm gonna subtract the sky because the sky mass exists. So go ahead and click subtract sky and it just cleaned up those edges for me and did a really darn good job. So that's how you can use these masks in combination. Now I'm not gonna go that high. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit brighter. So maybe like a quarter stop just to give it a little bit of visibility there, but clean up those edges by subtracting or adding or intersecting mass, however you wanna do it. Again, depends on the photo, but being able to do that and the way Lightroom does it just makes it super easy. Now I'm gonna go into architecture and what I wanna do here is slightly increase the exposure. And I'm also gonna slightly increase the temperature to give it a little bit of warmth. And of course, I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity and texture to the buildings. Now again, it's not perfect in terms of the mask. You can see that it's not gonna pick up everything. And if you look at the vegetation mask, we could probably do a, a similar subtraction here, but it's so tight in there. I don't even think that you'd see the actual uh, result of that. So in this case, I'm not gonna mess with it but it worked really well with uh, the trees and the sky, and it worked really well with the mountains and the sky in that last photo. Just things to be aware of, and little tricks and tips, tips and tricks, uh, which I also talk about in the ebook that I mentioned earlier if you wanna check that out. Again, it's free. It's just for something I can give to everybody that uh, subscribes to my email newsletter. So before and after an architecture, nailed it. I mean, honestly, simple, straightforward. And sky, I just wanna slightly reduce that exposure, and I wanna make it slightly bluer because I like cooler, kind of bluer skies. And my masks overall with these new powerful tools in Lightroom before and after, stunning, easy, powerful transformation. And for me, I'd probably come down to my favorite tool, which again, I talk about in that ebook, but it's a little bit of calibration just to give it a little bit of color umph. And I just tend to experiment with these, uh, these tools and play a little bit till I get something that I like. Uh, and I think I like that, but let me show you overall Again, if I wasn't talking, this was a couple of minutes of work before 
And after, even though it's called landscape masking, you can use it on city, cityscapes because it identifies architecture, artificial ground, which is effectively man-made stuff like a sidewalk, as well as natural ground. It works so great on so many kinds of photos. That's a quick overview and a review of how to use these new masking tools in Lightroom. I'll be back with more videos. If you have certain topics you'd like me to cover, uh, leave a comment down below. I'll see you in the next video, my friends. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See you next time. And until then, adios.